Welcome to Hub City Spokes, the podcast where we talk to entrepreneurs, artists, and other influencers. I'm Mike Jones, your host, and on this episode is Gene Evans. Gene is the founder of Evans & Associates, which is a company that offers C-level positions on a contract basis. Gene, how are you? Very good. What is C-level contracting? Well, what I do is I go in and I help see the CEOs and the owners of companies clean up their companies, get them organized, and help them grow. Okay. That's awesome. And where have you where have you operated in this capacity? I have lived in New England, Massachusetts, and Florida. Originally, I was from Florida and moved to um, New England when I was a young girl. And I graduated from college in, in Massachusetts and started my consulting when I had a child. So I've just had an interest of always being able to go in and clean up companies and help them grow. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. What did you do before you did consulting? I've been doing it most of my life. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Great. And um, what is your educational background? Well, I, ha- I graduated from Merrimack College in Massachusetts. I did do a couple of years in Florida. Found mm-hmm. out that was a... I sailed and played golf and then went north to finish school. So, um, and that I've been, I've been working with tax tax as well. I had a tax practice for a little while. Mm -hmm. So that was my background and then just decided to go in and clean up companies. Okay. And I'm assuming that, um, that background in, in taxes and finance kind of, um, comes in handy. Absolutely. Absolutely. The numbers always tell the story. Right. Right. Uh, who is a typical customer for you? Well, I've worked with startups and I've worked with mid-level companies up to $200 million. So I have a wide range of experience and I've always been interested in learning how the different companies work and how the problems that they face and how to come up with solutions for them. So now you are in Lubbock. Yes, I am. Can you uh, tell me the story of how you went from (laughs) Florida or Massachusetts or New England or wherever and ended up here in Lubbock? Well, I had moved to Florida eight years ago because I was originally from there and always wanted to go home because there was no snow and ice and went there for eight years and had great, had very good success. And when the hurricane was coming, Hurricane Irma, I had friends here. I have a friend here that that had moved to Lubbock and I had helped her move here and absolutely loved Lubbock when I visited. And when Hurricane Irma was on its way, to hit our town. I lived on the ocean and the water was gonna be 20 feet high and I packed up my little sports car and I decided, okay, I'm gonna go to the west part of the state. As I was going across, the storm headed in another direction. So I prayed and I was talking on the phone and decided to go to Texas as clear as day. It said, go to Texas. And so I drove, it took me two and a half days to get here and I stayed for 10 days The people here were so welcoming and so caring, and all of the wonderful experiences that are going on here, the growth, the the, just the education that people get here, the, the family situation, the spiritual situation. I just decided that on the 10th day, I put an offer on a house, left my car, and gave my two month notice to the company I was running in Florida. Wow. Yeah. So that's a that's a significant life event right there. It sure was, and I and I've never regretted it. It's one of the most amazing places I've ever lived, and I have lived in different places, and I've experienced a lot of things in life. But Lubbock is a real special place. Tell me about some of the experiences that you had, either in that initial ten days or since, um, that kind of reinforce that for you. Well, I just see the business support. So I'm the type that I'll go to the opening of an envelope. I'll meet anybody in a room of strangers as friends I haven't met yet. So I got out and I went and met with business owners and I love the innovation hub here at Texas Tech. And Kimberly Graham is who is a friend of mine that was here. And I just so am impressed how they support the entrepreneurial community 
And I've been an entrepreneur all my life and I've worked with them and love learning about them. And so I just talked to a lot of people and everybody wanted to help me. And everybody has said they're so happy I'm here. You don't get that in other places of the country. Yeah. (laughs) You really don't. Right. And where I came from, they're really angry. And you'd think in a beautiful place like Florida, they wouldn't be. But coming here, people wave or patient at the lights. So, And the business support that I've seen for the business owners, from banks to the LIDA to the SBDC, the Small Business Association, and Texas Tech, is just, it's, it's phenomenal. Because I've worked all up and down the East Coast with businesses and gone through the ups and downs of the economy in both areas. And this is amazing. Would you say that it's um, a pretty unique environment um, Mm -hmm. in terms of the commitment of all the folks involved? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really amazed at how everybody pulls together and supports each other in whatever situation, bad or good or whatever. You mentioned that you, um, you're the kind of person you're just going to go and, and make everybody your friend, um, and that you meet with business owners all the time. What are some opportunities that, uh, that you've had, um, that listeners of this podcast could have to make those same connections? Well, I, you know, the, the chamber of commerce has been so beneficial for me to meet people. And when I have a question or a challenge, I can put it out there. And I, I actually, with um, Lita, I, I got to know them and they've been very helpful. In fact, one of the teams that I mentor here at the Texas Tech Innovation Hub, you know, they supported us to go and help them learn how to go to an expo and do sales and that kind of thing. And seeing how they get out in other parts of the country just to promote Lubbock was interesting to watch and be a part of. Right, right. Are you talking about the Vegas trip? Yeah. For Lightning yeah. Import? Yep. Right, okay. And you talked a little bit about volunteering here at Texas Tech. Tell me what that's about. Well, I'm the director. I actually been here a short time, and I've, I've become the volunteer director of uh, mentors. I share that, that with Priya Gill. And we um, mentor startups that are selected to go through the accelerator program here at Texas Tech and we help even people that are interested Red Raider startup from the I I think it's elementary school and high school and plus I think they have a community one that the the Red Raider startup so I have been a judge I've 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 worked with teams I'm trying to encourage young women to really build their confidence and and bring them out and help them create these companies because there's some amazing technology coming out of Texas Tech and the area that really just needs some basic business help. Right, right. Um, Explain the accelerator program a little bit to me. So the accelerator program is a program that Texas Tech puts on that when they come up, when somebody comes up with an idea, So it's from ideation to creation to implementation is how I look at it. So if if somebody has an idea and they want to turn it into a business, there's programs available at the Innovation Hub that that can take you from discovering if the idea is a good idea through the I-Corps program. There's grants available that fund travel. There's also um, a business plan competition there's the accelerator program that if you get selected, you get to you get judged. You're before a panel, and your idea and your form is form of the business is um, is judged. If you're selected, there's you get a year program, and you get a team of mentors of five to six, and then you get um, twenty five thousand dollars that goes towards creating the company. You go through a program of the hub camp that teaches you all the basics of what you should do for a startup. And from the formation of the business to getting it out there and selling it. So it excites me because it really addresses the things that I want to see the companies go through and come out as a success. Who is eligible to participate in the accelerator program? Um, Community members and uh, students, faculty from Texas Tech. But my main goal is really to get the community involved because... 
I see so much benefit. Um, there's a lot, I've, I've gotten to know the SBDC, the people there, they help with business plans, but really the forming of the company and helping them succeed from this, from the expertise that the mentors give are just phenomenal. Right. So it's not just Texas Tech not students or alumni or something like that that can participate in it. It's truly for the whole community. Yes. Okay. Yes. Tell me a little bit about Red Raider Startup, which you mentioned a little earlier. That's really fun. So the high school one, um, well, either or any of them, right? They come, they they spend a weekend here at the hub, and they go and they 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 come with ideas, and I guess they all negotiate to come up with the one that's the one that they want to form teams and form a company over the weekend, right? And then at the end, they present to they call it an investor panel that gives them critique and judges on if their business is good, bad, how it looks. And it's done in three days. It's pretty right. amazing. And it's a lot of fun. So they sit at the end of it in an investor panel, which is like Shark Tank type? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And some very interesting ideas have come out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say that another person that I was interviewing was talking about, um, I think it may be a catchphrase of, of Kimberly's, um, something about collisions, right? So you got when people are doing these startup programs or accelerator, more specifically the Red Raider startup, all the people that come here, I mean, it could be. They don't know any. They don't yeah, know each it other. It could be 100 them. people and none of them know each other, really. Right. And so they're just so somebody could be software and somebody could be, uh, you know, like a finance major and somebody could be a mechanical engineering. Yep. And, and they just kind of come together around ideas that they like. Yes. Okay. Yes, and they, they negotiate with each other. Right. If they think their idea is best, they have to negotiate to get that to the top, and then they break out in teams. And sometimes they pivot and change their idea through the weekend. Right, right. That's great. I've actually participated in that, as not as a as a investor panel judge, but as a practice judge and as a mentor, and I had a really good time doing it. It's that. fun. The yeah. high school ones, I actually I loved because of their enthusiasm, and I can't believe the ideas that people are coming up with here. Yeah. And that's another reason why why I'm so impressed. Living in the Boston area, I was around entrepreneurs and really smart people. In Florida, there's entrepreneurs and there's, you know, people that'll take you for everything you got. Mm -hmm. God bless Florida, but um, but here you've got a very good combination, really smart people, really hardworking people. And, you know, the it's just amazing some of the really good ideas that are coming up yeah yeah and and something that's kind of an undertone to what you're telling me is um kind of a collaboration that yes. we have here yes. versus more of of where florida may be more cutthroat yes. more competitive yes right I, I would agree with that that's the uh that's the experience that i've had as well let's talk a little bit about um your entrepreneurial journey um because i think that uh, well, number one, I'm interested in it, uh, and I'm the one asking the questions, and that's good enough, I suppose. So um, have you had any mentors um, that kind of helped you out along the way? You know, from when I was was younger, my father always encouraged me and helped me put together a business from the time I was probably 12, 13 years old. I've just always loved businesses, creating them, and, you know, testing different theories and ways of selling and ways of just how to get out there and create products. Um, I've, I've had five or six businesses myself, small businesses that I was drawn to and realized that if you don't have the passion for the businesses, it's very hard to succeed. Um, and I've bought and sold businesses and I've also worked with many owners that have wanted to exit or buy or sell or, so I've kind of been in it, all kinds of different experiences. Mm -hmm. And the last one that I had in Florida was really interesting because I said, you know what, let me put myself in a large company because small business is always trying to grow and they run out of money or they, they need to find money or they grow too fast and they don't know what to do from there. So I went to work and ran a $150 million produce company and it had been around for 25 years. And it was just interesting to see that the same challenges appeared in the larger business. There were 160 employees and they were the largest asparagus 
importer in the country plus other produce. I'd never been in produce. I didn't know I didn't even know where asparagus came from. So it was really interesting to see that large businesses have the same same challenges. And, you know, it has to do with the personalities of the CEOs. It has to do with the personalities of the owners. And they attract those types of employees and culture. And, and, and it just was a lot of fun to be a part of, to see. But I love startups. I mean, passion comes out and I, I will go anywhere just like with the SEMA show that I went to. Mm. I mean, I just love helping the startup companies or, you know, s- smaller companies just get going. You mentioned your dad as kind of your primary mentor. Was was he an entrepreneur or was anyone else in your family entrepreneurial? Yes. My my mother was always starting a business. She she was really good at yard sales. You know, she knew how to sell like you couldn't believe. She'd buy something for 60 cents and sell it for 60. So oh. I learned that. Um, my father had a TV business for years and then he worked, he worked for a startup semiconductor company up in New England. And it's Varian Extreon, which is a, a really large. So he grew with that company for probably 25 years. And I just always loved the excitement of it. So, you know, and then the reason I got into accounting was because he said, oh, you can always get a job. Well, I always thought, well, I'll always find a company I could buy. Right. You know, and I, that didn't turn out that way, but I did work with so many companies that I saw through the accounting firms that I worked with. I even straightened out accounting firms and legal firms just to put myself in there to see how, how it all worked. Mm-hmm. When you decided that you wanted to do consulting, did you have a roadmap that you followed or what, uh, what did that look like? Well, actually what happened was, is I was going to have a, have a child. And when they started, when they started saying that, you know, you have to either, you only had a certain amount of time you could work. You couldn't go to the doctor when the doctor's appointments were, whatever those struggles were as being a, a mother and, and, just a human living a life I just did not like that so I said you know what I'm going to go out on my own and do my own thing and I opened a tax practice that's that's what I started with but the pressure of that I just really I wasn't cut out for that um so I just was always intrigued in software and I had a computer business for a short while with the software implementation. I've implemented large accounting pro- uh, systems and small. And so I built my business pretty much on that with implementing accounting systems like QuickBooks. I can teach QuickBooks, which I do now anyway, and I clean it up and straighten it out and organize it. But it kind of took a life of its own because I just always loved going into the companies and working with the owners. So, you know, Roadmap didn't even know it was a real career right? until I went to a Harvard seminar with consultants and there were all these big deal women that were teaching or a part of Boston Consulting Group and all of that. And I said, oh, look at that. There is a career in that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I hadn't, hadn't created it uniquely. <laughs> so some happy accidents kind of along the way. Absolutely. Right. Are there any habits that you would care to share that help you to be successful? Well, I'm always curious and I always follow where my my gut tells me to go. And I really trust my intuition a lot. Um, I mean, routine or whatever, you know, when I'm in a client, the first thing I go to is just see where the mess lies and and discover what their intentions and goals are. And I, I really, the curiosity is what keeps me going. I just love to learn. Like even where, I am, where I'm working now with Primitive Social and, and uh, Fast Pay Payroll, it's interesting because of the age of the employees. And it seems to have been a challenge over the years as I've worked in other companies, with other companies is the millennials, the young people, how do we get them motivated, whatever. Well, I want to learn. So I'm going in on a clean slate saying, okay, let me see. And I probably drive the owners crazy because, you know, I've got 17 ways to communicate and I'm used to talking. So <laughs> it's just different. <laughs> right, right. Um, and disclosure, I'm part of those, those companies as well. And it is a very young workforce. Yeah. And it's yeah. really interesting. And I really am enjoying learning about how 
different the communication because my I have a son right. who's an entrepreneur and he's 29. He has three or four businesses of his own down in Florida, and you just have to understand the different ways of how they market to each other, how they how they communicate, how they grow, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, and I will say that. Um, from a millennial's working standpoint, the ones that I've worked with, I, I don't see as being problematic in terms of motivation. They have a lot of them have a different um, set of goals. Mm -hmm. I think that shows in things like Red Raider Startup and the accelerator programs and competitions. You'll have um, half of them are pitching not non for profit type mm -hmm. um, endeavors, right? And so they they just have a different mindset. And that's fine, and but I've I've not experienced problems with uh, work ethic out of millennials or anything like that. No, and what I found is this is really the older people's way of the way we did business. Yeah, like you know we had to sit at the desk all day long, mm -hmm. and if you weren't there, you weren't productive. Right. And I have just found that that's not the case, and I know I don't work that way. And though the guilt stills there if I'm not sitting at a desk staring at a screen all day, but the productivity, I just, they, they have a life balance and it's, it's really, you need to respect that. And I think it's really neat to see and learn. I would say that that's true. I would say that that life balance is more important to that generation than it was to say my generation. Oh. Yeah. That was not even a question. Right. You worked, you, you know, you, I had my son on my, my hip and working yeah. until midnight. So, yeah. No, I, I, I and I, like I said, I just had to, you have to eliminate all the prejudging and just say, okay, I'm here. Let me learn. Well, and not only that, but if, if you are not going to change, then you are not going to survive. Right. Right. And if your workforce is, they've got a different set of priorities, then you got to, you got to change to accommodate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about maybe some lessons that you have learned that maybe you wish you had known as a younger person. Can you think of anything that that you've learned recently or, you know, within the last few years that you're you're thinking, man, I'm, if I had known that 20 years ago or 25 years ago, that would have been a huge thing for me. You know, it, it's kind of how I've I've raised my son is just to follow his passion so whatever that passion was, it used to be horses for me when I was a young, you know, I was going to go to school for that. Um, but my father said, go get a job in accounting and you'll always have it. So you follow a path and I, 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 you don't feel like you're allowed to do that. And I encourage the people that I coach now or mentor now to really feel it in your gut and feel it in your heart because through the tough times, that's what's going to get you through. And that's what I'm doing now. So I'm following my passion. And if it doesn't feel right, I won't do it. And I'm learning along the way because I really, I, and when I was younger, I had so many passions. And as an a entrepreneur and probably ADD, it was like, oh, there's an opportunity. Let me go after that. And I went after everything. So, you know, really honing in on the one thing that's really, really that you're good at or that you really care about and really follow through with that because you can just if you're going to wear yourself out and spend all that money and you might as well do what you love what are you learning about right now what is something a book you're reading or a topic you're studying or something <laughs> right now well i have four books going <laughs> so i'm a business book person i'm a fiction i'm a magazine i just i i was reading ink and um I, I, there, there's just all kinds of things to learn. Um, I'm going blank right now, but you know, I, I'm, it, it's funny. Cade suggested I read, um, rocket fuel, which was a great book. Cause it talked about the, the, um, dreamer or whatever it is mm -hmm. and the integrator. And I realized, I took the test and I realized, Oh, I'm the integrator right. where I think at another time in my life, I probably wasn't. And that was just really interesting to learn. And there's just a lot of, I just love learning and, and I, I love to go to conferences. I'll go to any kind of um, business entrepreneur conference. I've done some women's coaching um, at a women's empower uh, conference that I've gone to in Washington, D.C. and Florida. So. Okay. And that's Rocket Fuel by Gina Wickman. 
I guess. Yeah. I want to say that... Uh, I have so many books. I, yeah. You know. I want to say that Austin Hughes, who I interviewed previously, I know that he recommended a Gino Wickman book. I'll have to go back and see if it was this one. I haven't read that. I'm going to have to... Yeah, it's an, e it's an easy read. I give every one of my... Um, Every one of my CEOs that I'll work with, it's right. built to sell. And I think I shared it with you. Yeah, I've and, read that. Yeah, that's a great book. And I loved it because it's simple yeah. and it just gets you to focus. Yeah, it just takes an evening to read yep. it. Yep. You know, you just yep. get some um, some good information out of it, short time. It's entertaining. It's a great book. I yeah. can't remember who wrote that one. It's um, John Warlow. Oh, he, that's he's, right. Yeah, that's right. He's an exit guy. Um, besides Rocket Fuel and Built to Sell, have you read anything else that I should be reading? I've done. I, it's funny. I was looking at the. Um, my son gave me the Four Hour Work Week years ago, and I love that book because it's like really you don't have to consume your life with work. And he just the guy that wrote that. What's the name of him? I yeah, can't I remember. remember. Um, but he just, he has the mentor. There's a tribe of mentors that he interviewed and that was really good. It's a big, thick book, but he went and interviewed. I've also got Three Feet from Gold. That's a fantastic book. Three Feet from Gold is a Napoleon. It's based on Napoleon um, Hill's life or whatever, but a guy oh, okay. goes out and he he's three feet from gold and mm. he almost gives up and he goes to mentors all through and it's fantastic. Right, right. Um, Tim Ferriss? Yes, that's oh, the yeah. guy. I love yeah. him. I didn't know that. I just Googled it. <laughs> no, I know. And Tim Ferriss is, is interesting because he's not, he's had success, but it's not like educational. So he's kind of learned on his way and he's just dove in and done it, you know, which is, there's something to be said for that. Cause I've always, a lot of people feel they have to be perfectionist to do go and do anything or make mm -hmm. sure it's not right or wrong or I never would have done an interview like this in the past but it's like what have I got to lose sure yeah <laughs> if nothing else it's a, a good experience yeah absolutely yeah. and a new experience if you've never done it before um, speaking of experiences um, what do you like to do for fun around here well I'm getting back into riding so I'm gonna do some barrel racing because I love barrel racing I've owned boats and all that race cars mm -hmm. and done all kinds of crazy things so i say no to pretty much nothing right so what i just was came it a ferrari or lamborghini you got to drive it was, down a, it was a i think a lamborghini a lamborghini i don't know some big SEMA? race yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> six laps it was a blast yeah um but i just went to colorado i love to travel and go to new places so I'll get it. That's what I love about Lubbock too, is the airport's so easy to get in and out of. You just sure. get on the plane and go wherever you want. Yeah. yeah. What about any of the local um, activities here? First Friday Art Trail. I've done the First Friday. I absolutely loved it. I thought there'd be a hundred people and there were thousands. Yeah. 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 I, I was so amazed and, and the quality of the artwork and the galleries I never knew existed. I've seen some fantastic musicians. They have the living room concerts which I'd never heard of people do, you know, start playing in living rooms and you donate money. And there's a woman in town, Melissa Grimes, that has her house that she offers her living room. Um, and I've gone to the cactus theater and one of my neighbors was one of the best singers I've ever sang. Jeff, Jeff McCray. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I've just had a lot of fun. So I've, I've gone to the national heritage the ranching, yeah, whatever you... National ran Ranching Heritage Center. Yes, yes. I did the Christmas lights. I go mm. to everything. Yeah. So I, I, I just drove to Colorado because I'd never been there. So on my way back, I saw that the that Paladuro. I've been to Paladuro. Oh I've been yes. to Cap Rock. I'm going to go horseback riding there to all those places. But they do have the show Texas. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yep. I really want to see that. I didn't realize it closed in August last year. So yeah. So I'm going to make sure I make yeah, arrangements. I think it's a summer thing. Yeah, it's June to August. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that. And there's also a wakeboarding competition at Buffalo Lake. Right. Buffalo Springs Lake this weekend. So I'm, I yeah. couldn't believe that I ran into that last year. And Are you I'm like, compete? wakeboarding. No, I've never <laughs> wakeboarded. But I'm pretty amazed there's boats and wakeboards in Lubbock. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, I think they have uh, drag racing for boats out there at Buffalo Springs. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like huh. the 200, maybe even faster, 200 mile per hour boats get out there. and, and Oh, I'd uh, do that in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of fun. I used to race 
snowmobiles years ago right right oh yeah well um uh, we're kind of down to the last question here and that question is what can the uh startup community the e- ecosystem here uh around us um the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh any of the agencies um any of the educational um institutions or anything like that what can what can we as a community um do for uh for gene evans you know it's my whole goal in this last year being here it's really to understand how i can serve the community the best and i just ask for if just getting feedback and understanding of how can i best be a part of the community to make it better to be successful in in what i'm doing i would love to help more businesses because i just know that i have something to offer but it's translating what I know into what they can use. And also really just helping with the the mentor program, which I think is just so much fun and would be so amazing for anybody. And if anybody wants to know about anything to do with the Innovation Hub, I just love it. Right, right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, to come down here and talk to me. I had a great time. This has been awesome. And I learned a lot, and hopefully everyone else did too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hub City Spokes is presented by the Lubbock Economic Development Alliance and produced in partnership with Hamel Brothers Studios. A special thanks to the Innovation Hub here at Texas Tech University for hosting us. To hear more from our creators and catalysts, visit lubbockeda.org slash podcast.